Without the ocean, there is no life. While Bill was developing business cases for Vancouver Island, he learned that seaweed was going to change the world. After an hour on the phone with one of Canada's most knowledgeable seaweed experts, Bill's entrepreneurial spirit was sparked, not because he needed a new project, but because of the positive social, environmental, and economic benefits this budding sector offered. Seaweed farming helps feed our growing populations, helps revitalize coastal communities, and reverses human impact on the oceans. Only 2% of our global food production comes from the ocean, but oceans cover 70% of our planet. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Welcome, I'm Christine Cuvelier of Culinary Concierge. As an executive chef and Canada's leading global culinary trendologist, I think about and taste the future of food. I help my clients launch on trend, on time, great tasting food and menu items. The definition of innovation is the introduction of something that tastes great, is good for you and good for the planet. And you know that could be the definition of seaweed. Cascadia Seaweed are leaders in the rising tide of seaweed innovation. For the past few months, I've been experimenting in my test kitchen, making products with seaweed in them that taste great, that are good for you and good for the planet. For the Seaweed Festival, I reached across Canada, coast to coast, and talked to all my chef friends. They've been experimenting in their kitchens with Alaria and sugar kelp. Every day for the next seven days of seaweed, log on, watch a chef video, be inspired by their recipes. Let's make this the year kelp is cool. And don't forget, it's all about taste, taste, taste. Hey there, Shucker Patty here. I'm at home cooking up some oysters and I got some chance to start talking about some seaweed. I got my friends at Cascadia Seaweed sent me some lovely kelp from beautiful British Columbia and I'm gonna play with it here today. I uh, wanna show you how simple it is to showcase seaweed. Seaweed is the latest and greatest that's up and coming here in North America. It's only been eaten around the world for thousands of years, but it's something that is also super sustainable, great for the environment and really, really healthy. Here we have a little bit of a, a winged kelp. Look at what happens when it comes. Look, it's all natural. It comes on the stalk. There's a little bit of the stalk right there. This is a farmed or aquacultured kelp, which is beautiful. It grows very quickly. One of the fastest growing plants in the world, produces a lot of oxygen, sequesters CO2, and has got fantastic nutritional value for human consumption and even cows. There's lots of stuff they're doing on with cows and all that, but why let them eat it when we can eat it at home? This is a little sugar kelp. It's got a sweeter flavor to it, absolutely beautiful, and comes in very wide swatches, and you can just Julian that up and put it into just about anything, salads or coleslaw perhaps. I actually like the very stocky bits of it because it gets a little bit more textural. And I'm gonna put this into a little bit of an omelet coming up. We're gonna put all this together. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, give it a rinse under cold water colander, let it dry a little bit so it's easier to julienne and chop up. Then we're gonna shuck a few oysters, we're gonna mix the omelet together, we're gonna put it in the pan, cook it up, we're gonna have it done in about three minutes. Not a problem, super easy to do. You can substitute any dark green vegetable that comes from the land with kelp from the ocean. Bring it on to the dinner table anytime you want. We're gonna shuck some oysters today too, so come on back, we'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the sugar kelp that I got in from Cascadia. It comes in absolutely fine, you can see that. I've put it in a little bit of water, just to give it a rinse, because uh, it's easier to cook with when you rinse it, dry it off and it comes in and it's absolutely beautiful. You can eat it right out of the bag. You can bring it in frozen. It freezes gorgeously, it rethaws as well. So it's very, very versatile in that sense. But look at that lovely thin piece of kelp. You can dry this up, you can slice it up, you can put it into a salad or a coleslaw. Very, very simple to use. I'm gonna take this and we're gonna put this into a mignonette. This other one that I have here, this is called a winged kelp. And this one's gorgeous because it actually has some stocky bits to it as well. So sort of like uh, uh, kale and it's got the stalk and the vine to it. Oh, look at this. 
it just, as it comes out, it comes in this very long strand. It's gorgeous. You unravel that, you flatten it out, you can dry it, and it looks beautiful on anything, but you can still eat it and crunchy like, a, like an absolute chip or a snack. Take a look at that. Absolutely beautiful. What we're going to do is we're just going to rinse it out. We're going to take that, uh, dry it a little bit, and then we're going to chop it up. We're going to put it into an omelet. I'm going to show you. These are the ingredients that I'm putting into my omelet. Obviously, we have eggs, garlic, onion, cherry tomatoes. We've got a little bit of fresh lemon. We're going to squeeze some lemon in there. Uh, some cheese, because everybody wants a little cheese in their omelet. And today we're going to put oysters in there as well. So a very classic hangtown fry with a little bit of twist. We're putting a little bit of sugar kelp in there. We're going to have some fun with it. Use those sea greens, get it super healthy, and we're gonna put it into an omelet. It won't take any time at all. So I wanna put it all together, but I wanna assemble things uh, first. First things first, we're gonna to have to shuck a few oysters. That's these kids right here. These are Sweet Island kids coming out of Prince Edward Island. I'm gonna show you how to shuck a few oysters. I'm gonna put them into here, I'm gonna save the shells, and then we're gonna do the rest of the omelet in bits, and then we're gonna assemble it all at the oven. First things first, oysters. Take your little oyster here, teardrop shape. We'll show you where you want to shuck the oyster. That's the hinge, that's the back. It also has a very round part. That's the cup, the bottom to it, and the flat part is the top. So you want to put it top side up, cup side down on a board. I have a fancy little board here. You can use a cloth if you're shucking at home. This is how I shuck oysters at, uh, in my own place and at my restaurants or whatnot. I use my own little oyster knife here. It's an ergodynamically uh, thought of knife. You pop it with a key in a lock twist. Don't paint can it. You want a key in a lock. It's just like opening a door. It's too easy. So you come down here to the hinge of the oyster right here. I'm giving it a little wiggle in where the where the knife tip wants to go. Give it a little, little wiggle forward pressure and quarter turn. Pops that oyster. It's all set. Pry this up. Now I'm going to bring it up to the camera. See that where the adductor muscle is attached to the top shell right there. What we want to do is we want to scrape right there to release that oyster. See that black spot? You want to see that because that means it's loose and ready to go. So then you turn the oyster, the adductor muscle is right here. You want to take this and scrape the bottom of the, of the shell, make sure it's loose. And at this point in time, you can put it right there, ready to go. We can do this ahead of time and we can get a lot of oysters done. I think we're going to put, it depends on your budget, <laughs> really, when it comes down to oysters and omelets. Uh, or how many oysters have you got kicking around the house? You know, I've got a couple dozen. So I think I'm going to put 12 into this uh, in this omelet. I think it's going to be a good little thing. First thing, I better test it though, eh? Better make sure they taste good. You know they're going to taste great. Sweet Island Kiss coming up, Prince Edward Island. Take the little oyster, slide it in, two by two, aerate, breathe in. So you can taste the true flavor of the ocean right there. Beautiful, salty, sweet. This is gonna go beautifully with the seaweed, which is gonna bring out more of those sea greens when we put it into an omelet and cook it up. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes, shuck a few oysters, get it all set, then we're gonna chop up the seaweed. Great, now we got all the oysters shucked up. I'm gonna put them aside and uh, get the rest of the omelet bits and pieces ready. So uh, give us a couple of seconds. We're just gonna clean up your uh, cutting area. Here we go. What we wanna do now is of course get our seaweeds ready. So we've gotten the seaweeds out. I gave it a little rinse through a colander and I wanna just collect it and make a lovely little bunch and then we're gonna chop it up. So give me a second, I'll be right back. Beautiful. You're probably going to hear Chef Tex McDoggo, my sous chef. He's barking in the background. Don't worry about it. We're at home. It's how we do these things at home. Tex, don't chase the squirrels right now. It's what has to happen. Now that we've done our oysters, we're going to set these aside. I'm going to take care of the seaweed and all the other ingredients for the omelet next. And then we're going to prep everything up and let her go. So first things first, take care of your cutting surface. Make sure it's nice and clean as with everything. Then we're going to get our lovely seaweeds out. Now, I've taken care of some of them. I'm gonna take care of the rest of them, but gave it a little bit of a, a wash and a slight dry. Look at the look at the beautiful uh, seaweed. This is the uh, winged kelp, the Alaria. Absolutely beautiful, comes on stock. And I'm gonna just julienne that up so that we have a good variety of that one. And as it pops out, you may wanna give it a little bit of a dry out so that it's a little bit easier to work with. And think of it like, 
the, the smell is so good. I'm in Toronto and I just, it smells like I'm in the ocean. It smells like I'm at British Columbia and it really takes that concept of taste of place to wherever it goes. Now the seaweed, it can, it can travel dried as well. You can dry the seaweed as I have right here. I've done this in a little overnight in the oven, toaster oven. You can see there's a couple of little beauties right there. Look at the, look at the flake on that one. Super dry, very crisp, looks gorgeous on plate, but it's also absolutely edible. You can put that into a little crisp salad if you want. I would take a little bit of this right now and just as is, super flavorful, absolutely gorgeous, just tastes of the ocean, beautiful stuff. The, the product actually freezes very well, and that's sort of how it got here. And then I thawed it out, and now I've just given a little rinse. I'm gonna put in my omelet about a half a cup. Everything is eyeballing. It's about a half cup to a cup of seaweed so that we can make a nice big omelet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, I'm gonna chop it up, and then we're gonna get everything all together. We're gonna to put the omelet together or cook it up on the stove. All right, be back in a sec. All right, here we are. I wanna show you how easy it is to actually chop this up. Now I've just arranged it all. It, it's just wet. It does not have a viscosity to it. A lot of people think it's gonna have some sort of uh, strange flavor, texture to it or whatnot. It just feels like wet kelp, vegetables. So I'm gonna align this up and make a nice julienne with it and uh, we'll see how it goes. And then I wanna have a nice coarse chop. Coarse chop is the way I wanna uh, put it in instead of something super fine. You can do it any way you want to, but as you can see, it really just takes no time at all to go through this as any regular broadleaf green vegetable. Keep your eye on the blade. You never know. You always got it in case you cut yourself. You don't want to do that. You can see it's already come up with a nice fine strand as such. Looks really good. I want to chop it up a little bit more on this side as well so that it doesn't get stringy into my omelet. I want to have it sort of as a coarse mince. There we go. Seaweed is done. We want to get that together. Well, Tex is going off on the squirrels outside. Oh well, shooting stuff at home, it's going to be fun. So let's put this together. I'll be right back and we're going to put the rest of the omelet together as well. Okay. I'm going to take care of text right now. Hey, well, here you go. Here's your whole omelet all ready to go. We have everything that you need here. We've got the eggs, we've got the cheese, we've got the oysters, we've got garlic, onion, lemon, egg, oh, we said the eggs, tomatoes, and of course, we got the sugar kelp. So this is the, the idea of taking sea, uh, spinach out or kale out, and putting seaweed in, because this is the way we're gonna do it. I'm gonna head over to the stove, we're gonna whip things up, and we'll see how it goes. Very simply done, make an omelet, stuff it, serve it. If you can do that, you can do anything with seaweed. So bring it on over here. Let's check it out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna first off, we're gonna cast iron skillet, sear my oysters and my kelp and my vegetables and put it all together as a nice little uh, uh, composition. And then I'm gonna make the omelet and fold it in and go from there. So first things first, heat up the pan. Okay, here we go. We're gonna need to put some butter into our pan. Get a really good, you know, nonstick, go ahead and omelet pan. So get that butter in there and get it nice and bubbling and what we want to do while we're waiting for that to happen is to have our eggs excellent Get it up around the sides. Might be a little bit too much butter. 
Oh, well, we'll put a little bit in there if you have to. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, here we go. So, eggs. Into the pan. And really just let it firm up. Bring it down to the sides. Using a fork, yes. In a nonstick pan, oh well. I don't want to have, as they say, sometimes silicone might melt in if your plastics, uh, fork, whatever, spatula. We don't want that to melt in, but we do want this to be loose. We want this to firm up. So I'll firm it up in the middle. Beautiful. Omelette skills, not the best. Shucky skills, pretty good. Don't omelette with your glove on. I just, I forgot. I forgot. So let that firm up now, right? Let that firm up. So we're gonna put this here, right? And we're gonna use our handy dandy spoon. Grandma's spoon, grandma's silver spoon is what I like to cook with. Omelette is loose underneath, is firming up quite nicely on the inside. Now, we've got our saute of kelp, oysters, cherry tomatoes, lemon, onion, garlic, no salt, maybe a little pepper if you wanna go that way. So we're gonna get to this point where we wanna fold this over as well. So bring that to the front, right? And we're gonna take our stuffing and we're gonna put it right in there. Stuff it right up. You can put whatever you want in this omelet. And we are using seaweed today and fresh oysters and cherry tomatoes. And that's a well-stuffed omelet. It's gonna be quite good, I'm thinking. For those who wanna do cheese, let's put a little cheese in there. Where do we go? Here we go. Let's put a little cheese right at the back. Let's see what happens to that. Because it's always nice to have a little cheese. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our plate. We're going to bring it up. Turn off the stove. <laughs> As you do. Bring your omelet pan over like this. Plate up. Come sa. Put the stuffing side down. And fold it over, baby. There you go. <laughs> oh, she fell apart. Oh, well. Beautiful little omelet, overstuffed, under-egged. There you go, Kelpie omelet with fresh oysters, sugar kelp from British Columbia, some tomatoes, some cheese. We're going in there. <laughs> I'm gonna see this, how it goes in a minute or two. All right, let's just let it cool down. It's gonna be hot like lava right now, but we're gonna put out this stuffed omelet. We're gonna eat it in two seconds. Here we go. Okay, omelet's done. It's lava hot. I'm gonna let it cool off. And hey, there was that extra little bit of onion, a little bit of seaweed. I'm gonna make a little bit of a mignonette to go with the oysters on the half shell, which would be kind of cool. I usually do a nice little mignonette with a hard cider and an apple cider vinegar with shallots and uh, cracked pepper. And that's sort of like a hard cider mignonette. Super simple to do. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little twist on it, add a little bit of seaweed to it because it's gonna bring in another, another flavor. All you need is a mason jar, hello. Everyone's got a couple of these around here, and cider. So if you have some beautiful little cider, this is an apple cider, hard apple cider, so it's got alcohol to it. You can do it without alcohol if you don't want to. Let's just make sure it's okay. Pinky's up. Yes, working okay for me. I like to have my onions or shallots usually, but this time we have onions, quite with me. We're gonna mince them up nice and fine. We're gonna put that into the mason jar as such, really simple. We're gonna then take our seaweed, our sugar kelp, and we're gonna mince that up fine as well. We did that earlier, and we're gonna put that in there as well. Now we're gonna add the hard apple cider. Oh, we'll get it out of the can. Probably better that way. Hello, a little bit of this. Now to make it a mignonette, you gotta add some vinegar. So, organic apple vinegar. There you go, as such. Now, you might want to add a little bit of cracked pepper over the top. We'll let those bubbles settle down. I'll add a little bit more vinegar. 
And all you do, the beautiful thing about mason jar is you lid. You give it a shake. You can already see that it's already active. It's already working really nicely. It's coming around. It's got a good combination of onion, apple for sweetness, apple cider for bubbliness, and then, oh, look at that. Looks really cool. A little bit of pepper for uh, spicy uh, flavor. You can pull it off, take the rim. It looks nicer when it's got a little silver edge to it. You can put it up like this. Let that sit in a warm spot, just on your countertop. It's vinegar, it's perfectly fine. Let that sit for a couple of days and it'll just get better and better with age. If you wanna do this just before a little oyster party, then that's fine, you can do it. Let it set for 30 minutes and you'll get the flavors will come through, it'll be beautiful. Tex McDoggo is dying for a few oysters with this fabulous seaweed mignonette. So give us two seconds, I'm gonna to have to feed Tex McDoggo first and then we'll go bring it back to you. We're gonna try out this omelet and see how it's done. Fabulous! Okay, omelet's done. Minionette's done. Let's see how it goes. We've got a little oyster on the half shell. Sweet Island Kiss coming out of Prince Edward Island. And we're gonna take this minionette. Oh, you gotta see this minionette. It's chopped shallots. Oh, you can see that with the lovely kelp from British Columbia, all interspersed. And what that is, is gonna flavor out that minionette. It's gonna come off with an ocean seaweedy flavor, which is fantastic. And I'm gonna put that right at the back of that oyster. You want to make it look nice. You want to make the oyster look nice. And with the greens, it really kind of pulls off some lovely little colors. Little vinaigre vinaigrette mignonette. Check it out. And on the half shell. Here we go. Slide it in. Chew it up. Mmm. Beautiful. Crunchy. Oh, the seaweed actually comes through. And the oyster still comes through too. Tex wants to have an oyster. He's not going to get one because I got to have my omelet first. We're gonna have, you probably want the omelet, Tex McDoggo. Anywho, seaweed omelet, let's check this out. The Kelpie omelet with fresh oysters. And you can just pull it apart the way you want. This is gonna be a big, big meal as it is. And, mmm. Oh, <laughs> this makes a great brunch. Honest to goodness, the tomato is perfect. It goes well with the seaweed, it really comes through. It, it's it's just greens. It's got an oceany finish to it, but just like a good firm green as you would with a kale or a spinach. Put the seaweed in and try something different. Very oceany green kelpie omelet for you today. Here from Shucker Patty and our friends at Cascadia Seaweed. Oh, I'm just gonna eat. You guys keep going. I'll just do this. The oysters, the eggs. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Don't talk with your mouthful. We'll see you later next time.